Hey guys, welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today I have Intel's new Core i3 7350K on hand. That's right, an unlocked K processor, the first ever for the Core i3 series. Technically, these KB Lake chips aren't being released until early next month, but at this point, Intel's latest seventh generation series is anything but a secret. For the past few weeks, I've been slaving away at the benchmark rig, gathering results for the upcoming Core i5 7600K and Core i7 7700K reviews for next month's release. In that time, countless reviews, or previews as they're often being referred to, have been leaked, making our release day coverage next month a bit pointless. Intel tells me that the reviews that have been released so far have been based on CPUs sourced anonymously and not supplied directly from them. Well, hell, my i5-7600 and i7-7700K chips weren't supplied by Intel either, so I guess I have to ask myself why I've been waiting till the official release next month to release my review. Honestly, I just didn't expect Intel to sit on their hands and do nothing about all these leaked reviews. That said, they probably aren't too fussed about this release. It's not exactly anything new. At this point, we know KB Lake is, well, a huge disappointment. When compared clock for clock with Skylake, there is quite literally no difference in performance. And efficiency has only been mildly improved, the kind of improvement you might expect to see with a more matured process. The new motherboards we've seen so far look great, but truth be told, the new Intel 200 series chipsets really don't offer anything new either. So with the combination of all the leaked benchmarks and the fact that KB Lake just doesn't deliver, I was struggling to find motivation to finish my own coverage. Then out of nowhere, a pair of Core i3 7350K processors landed on my lap, and with no NDA in sight, I thought, what the hell, let's take a look. Obviously, when matched clock for clock with a Skylake Core i3 processor, there isn't going to be anything new here, just the same performance we've come to expect from a modern Core i3. However, this little fella features an unlocked clock multiplier, just like the Skylake Core i5 6600K or Core i7 6700K processors. So, what we have here is a Core i3 processor featuring two physical cores. But of course, like all Core i3 processors, hyperthreading is enabled here, allowing for four threads. Out of the box, they are clocked quite aggressively. This chip runs at 4.2 gigahertz, uh, but it can step down below that to save power when at idle if the speed step technology is enabled at the BIOS level. Uh, and, of course, it can also be boosted up higher because this is an unlocked chip. Uh, finally, like the previous generation chips, or the majority of the previous generation Core i3 chips, the higher end ones, this does have a 4 megabyte level 3 cache. Last generation's Core i3-6320 was the fastest i3 model we'd seen thus far. Clocked at 3.9 GHz, it got along quite well. That said, at a cost of around 160 US, one could argue that spending around, say, $20 more on the Core i5-6400 was a much smarter investment. Anyway, we'll talk more about that later in the video. For now, let's talk about testing. Since the 200 series boards are still under NDA, we decided to test using an updated Z170 motherboard. The ASRock Fatality Z170 Gaming K6 Plus sits proudly in our Core i7 6700K test machine, and with the latest BIOS revision supports the 7350K. So we swapped out the 6700K and got to it. As you might imagine, the i3-7350K isn't exactly slow at 4.2GHz, but I was keen to see how much higher the chip could be pushed. Using the Thermalright AXP200R CPU cooler, I reached a 100% stable overclock of 4.8GHz. Not bad, but not amazing either. This overclock was stable using 1.3 volts, and temps never went above 65 degrees. For those wondering, I was able to boot into Windows with the chip as high as 5 GHz, but it failed to pass the more stressful tests. The 7350K enjoyed a memory bandwidth of 32.8 GB per second in our Z170 test machine using DDR4 3200 memory. This is slightly more bandwidth than the Skylake processors had at their disposal, despite using the same configuration. Using Cinebench R15, let's take a look at the single and multi-threaded performance of the 7350K. At the stock 4.2GHz frequency, it roughly matches the multi-threaded performance of the much-loved 2500K, which is of course a true quad-core processor, albeit an almost six-year-old one now. Thanks to that high operating frequency, the single-threaded performance is quite strong. 
Overclock, the score is boosted by 13%, and while this is a decent improvement, it doesn't really help the 7350K close in by a meaningful margin on the more modern Core i5 processors. Before jumping to the gaming and application results, here's a quick look at the PC Mark 8 Creative Benchmark. Here the overclock netted us 9% more performance, resulting in a score of 8,410 points. That's actually higher than the stock clocked Core i5 processors. Still, this is of course a synthetic benchmark, so let's not read too much into those results just yet. Out of the box, the 7350K was surprisingly capable in Gears of War 4, delivering an average of 96 FPS. Overclocked, the frame rate was boosted by 14% to 109 FPS, which was enough to overtake the stock clocked Core i7 2600K. Not a bad result, and it does mean that the overclocked Core i3 processor was 28% faster than the previous generation 6100 model, which makes sense given it has a 30% clock speed advantage. Testing Overwatch saw the overclocked 7350K boost the average frame rate by 16%, allowing it to reach 219 FPS. This made it a good bit faster than the stock Core i5 2500K, but still quite a bit slower than the 4670K. At the stock clock speeds, I did notice occasional stuttering with the 7350K in Battlefield 1. This is despite pushing well over 60 FPS at all times. Overclocking the CPU to 4.8 GHz seemed to solve this, and we're now achieving a 130 FPS average, matching the Core i7 2600K. The last game I tested was the CPU intensive Watch Dogs 2. Here the 7350K only allowed for an average of 46 FPS out of the box. Dipping down to 37 FPS at times, the game didn't appear to suffer from stuttering issues. That said, stuttering was a major problem with the 2500K at its stock clock speed. Overclocked, we extracted 13% more performance out of the Core i3 processor, and it was now delivering a very smooth experience. Moving on from gaming, we have the Excel Monte Carlo workload, which took the 7350K a total of 7.6 seconds to complete. Overclocking reduced that time to 7.2 seconds, and this is a 6% reduction, but you aren't exactly going to notice it. This also only placed the 7350K alongside the stock 2500K in terms of performance. Okay, so how about content creation on a budget? Once again we find when overclocked the 7350K is only able to match the stock 2500K and AMD FX8370 processors. Clearly, if you're doing any kind of encoding work, you're best off getting a true quad-core processor. As we've come to expect from Intel's Core i3 range, the 7350K is very efficient. Overclocking kills efficiency, and with that added voltage we saw an 81% boost in consumption, for a 14% increase in frequency. Similar results can be seen when testing with Prime95. Here the consumption increased by 66%, placing the once efficient 7350K alongside the much more powerful Core i7 processors in terms of power usage. For the longest time now, myself and many others have been asking Intel to release an unlocked Core i3 processor. Finally the time has come, and I'm starting to think you should be careful what you wish for. Actually, in this case it really is just a matter of too little, too late. An unlocked Ivy Bridge Core i3 would have been amazing. An unlocked Haswell would have been pretty cool as well. Uh, an unlocked Skylake, maybe. But for what's going to be a 2017 release, an unlocked dual core with hyperthreading support is pretty underwhelming. In terms of performance, it isn't exactly slow, though having said that, for the most part, it only kept pace with the stock clocked Sandy Bridge chips, which, as I said earlier, they are approaching the six year old mark, and in the life of a CPU, this pretty much makes them great, great grandparents. That kind of performance becomes an issue when you take cost into account, and I'm not just talking about the price of the 7350K, though that in itself could be a real issue as well. The previous generation i3-6320 currently costs 160 US, and we can pretty much guarantee Intel will introduce the 7350K at a $10 to $20 premium. But let's give them the benefit of the doubt and say $10. At 170 US, that is a mighty expensive dual core processor, and for roughly $10 more, you can land the Core i5-6400. Keep in mind, we did test the 6600K at its stock frequency, and here it isn't much faster than the 6400, so you can safely assume the 6400 is going to demolish an overclocked 7350K. Making matters worse, the Core i5-6400 doesn't require an aftermarket cooler to achieve maximum performance. The stock box cooler is ample here. 
It also doesn't require an expensive Z series motherboard, a cheap H110 board will work fine. Since the Z270 boards are the only models with overclocking support, I have to imagine this is what the 7350K will require. Then throw in another $30 or so for a decent air cooler and you are now head and shoulders above what an entry level Core i5 setup would cost. Then there's that little matter of power consumption. Overclock those two cores, drink like it's their last night on earth. So taking all that into account, what do I think about the new KB Lake Core i3 processor, particularly this unlocked model? Well, I think you guys ought to steer clear of it. Anyway, that's my opinion. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. I'm your host Steve, and I'll catch you guys next time.